Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. Merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loved us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take home some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And a reading from 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. This is an evening of remembrance. We remember that Jesus took the form of a servant, took on that role, and washed his disciples' feet. We remember the institution of the Lord's Supper. And we remember the new commandment that he gave us, that we love one another. Memory is a gift and it can be a fickle thing some of us can remember incredible details of our lives i find the stories of our oldest members fascinating it amazes me what some of them can remember they remember the world they were born into and experienced and it's often very different from the world we now know they may remember that world though better than the current one. Some of us can remember what we ate last Friday night for dinner. I'm not one of those people. Memory, when it's good, is an incredible gift. 
It not only keeps us connected to the people in our lives, but memory helps us to make good and sometimes better decisions when we are able to remember the ramifications of our past words and our past actions. We are especially mindful of the gift of memory when we experience the loss of it. We know all too well that the loss of memory is tragic. My mother suffered from frontal lobe dementia, and she lived in a care facility in central Illinois. I remember one of the last visits that I had with my mother, and she asked me, Janny, what's my name? I said, Alice. She said, no, what's my whole name? Well, by then, my heart was breaking, but I said, Alice, Ann, Lind, Christian. Oh my, she said, that's a lot of names and I just can't remember things like I used to. I've learned over the years of my ministry the importance of memory. Besides serving as a parish pastor, I've served as a chaplain in a senior care facility. I have learned the power of memory in our lives of faith. I have learned that when people can't seem to communicate at all, they will still try to sing, Jesus loves me, if they hear it. And I have learned the importance of praying the Lord's Prayer. I almost always end prayers with our people with the Lord's Prayer. There is something about the Lord's Prayer, whatever shape they're in, they can relate to it. I have prayed with people not sure they are even hearing it. But as I begin to pray the Lord's Prayer, their lips start to move. And they try their best to say it with me. One of the things that I just happened upon years ago in my ministry is what has come to be known as the communion song. Its real title is Remember Me. It's powerful for me when I sing it, and what has been really incredible to me is how meaningful it has been to the people in my churches. On Sundays when I preach, and I happen to sing the communion song in the same service, I almost always hear more comments about the communion song than about any sermon and I choose not to think about that too much. I'm going to sing it for you now. The night before Jesus died, he took the bread, he took bread. The night before Jesus died, he broke the bread, he broke the bread, and said, this is my body broken for you, and said, this is my life. Drink this car. 
drink this cup, you shall forth my death. You proclaim my life. The night before Jesus died, he said, remember me. It always moves me to think that one of the most important things that Jesus asked of us is to remember him. Towards the end of the song, you heard the phrase about Jesus' death and life. You show forth my death, you proclaim my life. As Christians, we are always called to do that. But during this holy week, this song reminds us of the importance of showing forth and proclaiming Jesus' ministry, his life, and his death. Tomorrow is Good Friday. And we remember that Jesus died for us as we take the time to remember his life and the sacrifice of the cross. Jesus commands his disciples and he commands us to love one another. The love that we are to offer to each other is the love of equals. It does not matter how educated we are or how well or poorly we did in school. We all have physical brains with a cerebrum and cerebellum and all the other parts. It does not matter how much money is in our bank accounts. We are all born into this world naked and in need. We will die and we'll leave all of our wealth behind. It does not matter how important the world regards us or how famous we might become. Highly educated people die just as surely as people who are mentally or physically challenged die. Rich people die. The poorest of people die. It doesn't matter. Our true status is that we are a child of God and that God who gave us life plans to give us eternal life. One of my friends, her name is Marilyn, and I met her in seminary. I have known Marilyn for more than 40 years. And she is proclaiming Jesus' life and death in the most powerful of ways. A few days ago, just after Palm Sunday, she wrote in a media post, my favorite Bible verse is Matthew 16, 24 to 25, appropriate for Palm Sunday. If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. She continued by writing, I did not have the honor of serving in the military. The Vietnam War was ending just as I became available. But I have witnessed the bravery of my three sons who have served and are serving. And I admire beyond words their willingness to run toward the gunfire rather than away from it. But now it is time for me to do my part in response to their example. I am a nurse, and I am needed at the front lines in New York City where coronavirus patients are dying at the rate of 600 plus a day. I have never been one to let others do the heavy lifting. Next Sunday on Easter, I will be tra leaving for New York City and will serve on Long Island where the virus is spreading fastest right now. My son will be caring, caring for Rudy the Dachshund and the cat herd. I will be gone at least two months. I ask you to pray for me 
not for my safety, which in the end is not all that important, but that God will use whatever talents I have for his purposes. All of you will be in my heart, and I will miss you terribly. But we will be bound together by the Lord who walked toward the cross rather than away from it. Thank you, Marilyn. We are called to remember, to remember Jesus and then live accordingly. Each of us can do that in our own way. Each of us can remember and act on his command to love one another. Will you pray with me? Most holy God, during this holiest of weeks, may we remember the love that you have for each one of us. Thank you for the love you have shown us in the sacrifice of Jesus. May we remember, and then may we be inspired to be your loving people in the world. Amen.
As Jesus calls us to love one another, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of love, unite your church in the mission of humble service in Christ's name. Make us faithful disciples of Christ. Speak words of truth and grace through us. Encourage us in self-giving and in these days of a pandemic, self-restrained acts of kindness. Help us to love one another as you have loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. We thank you, God, for sustaining our lives through the bounty of your creation. We pray for good weather and good conditions as a new growing season approaches. Let the earth flourish so that all may eat and be satisfied. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. God, you give us a new commandment to love one another. Thank you for the love and action that is being shown by medical workers in our community and around the nation and throughout the world. Strengthen these dedicated servants and protect them as they care for all of us. We pray for more supplies and equipment that are needed for patients and staff. And we pray for those working on a vaccine for this virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. Merciful God, bring healing to those known and unknown to us. We remember especially today, Linda Crossfield, John Davidson, Pastor Craig Brimehorst and others, those who are living with ongoing health problems. We pray also for those who are lonely and feeling isolated, for those burdened with stress and anxiety, all who are suffering, all who need your strength, including those we remember before you now silently. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who mourn the loss of loved ones today. Surround them with your peace and comfort and bless all of us as we continue to share your life and love until that day when we all share in the feast of your everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God of love, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh. 
Let us pray. God of glory, receive these gifts in the offering of our lives. As Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart in the midst of this world, that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My God, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were delivered. 
They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips, they shake their heads. Trust in the Lord, let the Lord deliver. Let God rescue him, if God so delights in him. Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a slashing and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joints. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My strength is dried up like a pot's herd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of death. Packs of dogs close me in. A band of evildoers circles round me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones while they stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far away. O oh, my help, hasten to my aid. 